Okay, doing a second coat on this tray here. We're gonna try to work on getting more movement with some colors. It's already got some movement going on, but we're gonna try and direct it a little bit more intentionally. All right, let's get set up. Okay, so this tray here has set for several days now, and I'm finally getting to it. So this resin's really nicely cured. And what I'm gonna do is just a gentle sanding, kind of all over the background, but ever so lightly, because there is a metallic in there. I don't wanna take the metallic off, but I do wanna add a little bit of tooth to it and not ruin the design. So by adding a tooth, the resin has a chance to bond with the base a little bit more. And instead of bonding like this, it bonds more like this. So it's got more grips or areas to grip onto. Hope I'm, not, I'm describing that well. Let's see. And I wanna do a light brushing of alcohol on top of the areas that I Actually, I'll do more than that. I'm gonna try and see if I can pick up. It's important to get the excess dust up. Otherwise, you know, we're already finding enough dust as it is with the resin. And after I've done that, I'm gonna add a little bit of alcohol to a paper towel. And I'm using 91% alcohol. It works the best for me. But they usually, um, resin doesn't like water. So the higher percentage, the less water is in your alcohol. All right. And then use a dry area on this towel to kind of wipe up any re alcohol residue that I might have left over. And this is tricky because there's some sharp points on these little molds here. Okay. So that's all good. Close my alcohol. Okay. So what I'm gonna do here is apply a flood coat. I think I just bumped my camera. I'm all thumbs today. Okay. I'm gonna apply a flood coat to everything um, and pour intentionally on top of these little insect guys so that way the um, resin has a chance to say alcohol <laughs> uh, try again I do a flood coat of resin there we go uh, and pour intentionally on top of the insects so it has chance to get into the crevices so we'll do that first What I want to do is eventually tilt this so that way the color moves over it and the color will get trapped into the little grooves if I try to tilt it before applying resin on top of the little bugs. So, of course, my husband's probably in the background thinking, I'm resining bugs, what? Okay, I'm going to do a little bit extra in here. So I have enough for my tray. All right. And again, I'm using Stone Coat Art Coat Resin, which has got a good UV protection on there. Get bugs. I'm gonna dish my bug that wants to get in here. It's also got a good heat resistance as well as scratch resistance in it too. Now see how it's moving nicely over that bug there? That's what I want. 
So I'm kind of tilting this around just to get everything a nice good coat before I do my color. Because doing this after I have my color on it will ruin any intentional effects. Especially since I'm doing something subtle. Uh, it almost leaked out the back there. Okay, come on, behave. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. Okay, don't come out that one. Yes, I talk to my resin all the time. Down. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go the opposite direction and go from this side and keep twirling it. Now resin self-leveling, so we got some high points and low points right now. It will level out a bit. Now I don't know if it's going to be at the same level as the, the highest point on these little bugs here, but eventually we will get there. May have to do a separate coat. All right. Looks like everything has got a good coat here. All right. Hit with a little bit of heat. Primarily what I'm worried about is getting rid of bubbles ahead of time. Okay. So since these guys have some outward shaped textures to it, that's what I'm going to be taking advantage of today. So I'm going to be applying a little bit. I've got two colors mixed up. I've got a white and i got a grumpy and, I, and that's the uh, chameleon color. I don't want to add any additional colors because there is a lot of busy going on right here. Um, so what I want to do is by adding the white, it, it brings in the element of flying. So I haven't tried this before, so we're just going to give it a go. And this is grumpy. It's pretty much... It's kind of transparent. So we're gonna add little trails here. You're gonna see where I'm going in just a moment. And I realize they're going in a couple different directions, but eventually it will work out. I'm hoping. Please work out. Okay. And then this guy here, we're going to have it come off like that. So maybe he's breaking away from the pack. There's a couple different ways I can work this in as far as movement. One is by twirling or tilting. And, and then the other way is by adding a brush element to it and I think I might do a little bit of both actually I'm kind of looking at this now and I'm thinking I might do that exactly I might have more control that way just a little bit all right I forgot a book So this white is the uh, color passion white and I haven't mixed it up that strong. So it's barely opaque, but not super opaque, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I was in the process of pouring. I was thinking that this tool here might be the best one to work on. 
and these are just little silicone brushes, but super handy. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm literally brushing across the top and then I'm gonna brush down. I might go in with my point, kind of guide it. And that way I can have them flowing in the right direction that makes sense for the individual character here. And I can pick up some of the color and trail it back onto the wing if I wanted to. And even have it go over another wing. Lasso. Again, I'm concentrating because I'm hardly talking. <laughs> Let's see. You can see how that gives intentional pattern there. All right, I'm going to pull it on this like that because I don't want to drip. And you'll end up with quite a bit on your brush when you go to pick up your brush and just wipe it off into a cup. You'll be surprised if you're dipping it back and forth multiple times how much you actually get in your cup. All right. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. What do I need to add here? So I'm gonna do a little bit more of the grumpy in here. Now the key part is knowing when to stop because you can over mix it. That's probably not what you want. Of course I got the sides. <laughs> so if you're doing a tray like this, metal, wood, ceramic, whatever, and you get some on the sides, I say go ahead and continue working with your piece until you get it so that you're happy and you're ready for it. And at the very end, before you put it up, put some alcohol in your bag and then just clean up that area. Because it's inevitable that if you're cleaning up as you go, get more and more and more done so I'm, excuse me I'm gonna do that real quick and again all I'm doing is getting a paper towel with a little bit of alcohol on here and going along the edge and dipping it right back into the resin again I am all thumbs today. All right, fold that over. So it's got resin on it. All right. All right, that will do. Yeah, I think so. Let me bring you in for a close up. Okay, here we go. Are you ready for your zoom? Okay, so now these guys have a little bit of motion to them as you can see. And since they're still sticking up above the resin, 
a little bit. Some of the motion might go over and under parts or get caught, see how it's getting caught into the details? And that can look really, really cool. Especially like with this dragonfly, there's a little bitty, here I can get it at an angle. You can see the little bumps that are uh, above the resin there and it's getting caught, especially like, I'm trying to point at the same time, like right in there, there's a little bit of a scalloped edge. So that can look pretty cool. And if I were to tilt it, it would probably straighten out some of these lines into a swirl pattern that goes completely around the tray instead of it coming from the insect itself. Insect itself, I just cannot talk. Okay, we're gonna get through this. All right, I'm gonna put this up to cure. Okay, so it's been about three and a half hours. The stuff is really thick, but I did notice that a lot of this is faded out pretty good. So I wanted to go in with a skewer and manipulate it a little bit. I do have to do another pour because clearly I haven't covered up the bugs yet. But if you notice here how, how stringy it's getting, but when I drag it through, I'm creating these little patterns, which are kind of cool. It's almost like a marbling, but I'm still moving like as if it's flying. So I've got an air-like look to it or fly path, I guess you could call it. So a lot of the um, dragonfly colors that were next to it kind of moved on. And that's okay. Because I might do some more later, uh, meaning another layer of, um, of a subtle color to um, encourage the wind flow. Now all I'm moving around pretty much is just where Grumpy is. Because there wasn't a whole lot of white there. slow down there. You see I've got some bubbles that are coming up because I've already manipulated this a little bit and I did add some swirls in there like so. And you see how stringy it is. It will kind of lay down flat but I wouldn't do it this kind of manipulation past this point too much because I could get some peaks and we don't want that. it up a little bit. We want this to be a pretty piece. I'm not too worried about it being busy, but I am wanting it to be a pretty piece. So marbling is a definite plus in this case. Let's see. I kind of got some wind action going here. I'm just going to carry it through the butterfly and then move it past this guy. And that works out pretty good. I'm happy with that. This will calm down after a bit. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it alone for now. Hit it with a little bit of heat and that'll get some of the bubbles. It should calm down, but if you have a resin that um, sets up in about an hour, I would do this at like an hour and a half. Uh, but since this is our coat, it sets up in about two hours, so I can almost get away with the three hour mark here. I'm not hitting it with a ton of heat, just here and there. 
And you'll notice how that's, Let's zoom in. See how it created some bubbles came up from the surface or from the bottom. And by popping those, it'll slowly relax and meld back down. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna watch this for like the next five minutes if any other bubbles come up. So it'll be good. But see, even while I've been talking, some of these guys have come up too. All right, till tomorrow. All right, I'm getting this tray ready for hopefully the last coat. We'll have to see. See if I get it to the right level. But for right now, I'm trying to empty out these cups. They've got a little bit of resin in there. And we can get started with the next one. I'm hoping for something subtle. We'll see. Okay, so I've got some gold interference mixed up. I've got some Dalmatian uh, from the Too Faced collection from ATD mixed up. And some clear. Let's see. Do I need something more than that? I kind of want to distract from that a little bit. It still grabs my attention on the eye. So I think I might mix up some of this green here. Oh, do I have it out still? Let's see. Yes, I do. Yay! Okay, that would be um, this color here from uh, Just Resin Force Green. I'll also put a picture at the end of the video that has the colors I use. So let me put a little bit into a cup here and mix up some forest green real quick. Let's see if I can get it to kind of stay in the zone, hopefully. You ever have one of those problems that, you know, kind of percolates in your brain a little bit and you almost have to chew on it? To come up with the right solution, this is one of those. I like building on the motion because it also adds depth and layers to the resin. And you guys know me, I love playing with depth a little bit. And also playing with colors because, well, it's just their colors and they're fun. So this is kind of, I don't know what you call it, but it's almost a peacocky kind of color. Very pretty green. Blue, green, teal color. <laughs> All right, let me get enough clear on here because we need something to start with. All right. Make sure my gloves aren't icky and they're not so yay primarily going edge to edge but also covering over any bugs meaning um doing a thin coat over the bugs and yes bugs i also include the butterflies too and i know i'm getting that wrong and Whenever you add resin, hit it with a little bit of heat. Helps encourage the bubbles to go away. And if you've also had it out for a while, it also helps out with your um, ability to work with it too. It becomes more fluid, if that's what you want.
just trying to make sure everything has a nice coating. Uh, everybody's happy. Yeah, it definitely looks like I'm getting another coat in there. A little bit of dry spot there. So all you need to do is break up the surface tension if you get a dry spot. And that's what I just did, just by tapping it. All right, let's see. Yeah, I got quiet there for a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm a chewing on it. Hmm, I don't know how I did that. I got some on the inside of the handle there. And that must have been yesterday. Okay. So the tricky part is not overdoing it. Knowing when to stop and all that kind of stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start from the center. And you notice I'm just barely getting out some trickles too. Okay, that's good. And that was, uh, it's kind of a, gold interference well it's not kind of it is a gold interference color so it plays with light i love colors that play with light because you know when you look at it from different angles things come alive and that's cool so these are kind of a transparent type of a color Meaning like you can see through it. Now if I put enough of the pigment in there, it would get opaque enough that you would it would be obscured, but you can kind of see through it because it, it interferes with the light going through there. All right, now this is the forest green. This is the one I'm a little nervous about. So I just want to put a little bit of hints of color. in here with this. If I can do a little bit more there. Okay. All right. I hit that with the heat. Do I move it around with the brush or do I move it around with the heat gun? Okay, kind of going towards the brush here. Brush allows me a little bit of control over keeping movement going in the direction I want it. Uh, Now what I can do on these areas that have a lot of the color here and they're kind of obscuring the insect, um, I can pour some clear directly on top of that and that'll help that out a lot. So I happen to have in a cup here some clear ready to go. So let's see if we can do that.
don't need to do that B so much because it is already pretty much in the clear. Didn't mean to pun that out, but it is. And see how it kind of pushes that color away? I'll do a little bit more here. do is just manipulate this with a tip just to give a little bit of movement not too much just a little bit I can push some of the color out. Let's see if I can do that with this guy. I do know I'm going to have to do one more coat of resin on it. So, I'm looking at it from the side and like this butterfly has some high points in here and this butterfly has some high points as well so I'm like really happy with this Whenever you mess up, mess with your resin and stirring it up a bit, like I was m manipulating it with the brush, um, it's going to bring out some bubbles and you're going to want to hit it with the heat. I just saw something here. I'm just wondering. Yep. All right. So it did obscure this a bit. Got some um, activity going on here. It has an overall look to it, but without being so, I don't want it to be buggy. I want it to be kind of elegant and pretty. So I think we're there. So yay. All right, let's give you a close up view. Start with this little guy. All right, focus. There we go. Sorry, I need to go slower with the zoom in. I keep forgetting. Very pretty, very sparkly. It's a pretty bug tray. And this little guy looks good. Alrighty. 
Later. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. And check the descriptions for any links of the supplies I use, as well as my Etsy store. Because I got some art up there. Go buy some. Please. <laughs>